Hello and welcome back to Kim's Cozy Corner. Today we are going to do a green stalk update. I have a total of four green stalks in this space here. Before I get into too much detail, if you don't know what a green stalk is, it is a vertical planting system. You're growing up versus out in just under a two by two foot space. I have a video called All Things Green Stalk. You can learn all kinds of information about green stalks in that video, as well as a wealth of green stalk information in a green stalk playlist on my channel. So check out my green stalk videos and you can learn a ton of information prior to purchasing one. And but if, before you spend that kind of money, you want to make sure you know what you're getting into. So please check out some of the other vi videos because there's a ton of information in there. But this video is just to give you an update so you can see how all of the green stalks are doing. I have a total of 11 green stalks and yes, I did say 11, 11 green stalks of different things in them with different size containers and different number of layers. But I'm going to go over how each and every one of those are doing. So this green stalk here is primarily lettuce. And some of this lettuce was actually started indoors in my indoor growth space. And I brought them out and I've continued to harvest out here. And once one of the plants have spent its life, I'll remove it and I'll put another one in. But it's full of many different kinds of lettuce. And I'm going to be honest with you, I call it garden art because is this not beautiful or what? The red lettuces and then the browns and the greens just all mixed in here beautifully together. Now in this green stalk, I also have some uh, carrots. In the top layer, there's about four different pockets with carrots up high. I do have some carrots down low. I will bring you in close to see all four of these shortly. And then I also have down low here some bok choy. I love bok choy. Ooh, bok choy doesn't grow very well in the heat. It's a cool weather crop. So um, I got to figure out how to keep getting more and more bok choy, which is one of my favorite um, types of brassicas. So I'll bring you in close, but you'll see I have some empty pockets where I've harvested the lettuce, but I haven't reseeded it yet because I'm trying to stagger the harvest. But this is just so gorgeous. So let's just look next door to me here. I've actually harvested this green stalk already. So there are five layers in this green stalk as well. And in here I have mustard greens. I have curly kale. I have mustard greens again, and then I have dinosaur kale, and then in the very bottom, I have more bok choy. I gotta get all my bok choy in while I can before it gets too hot for it. But that's all this tower has in it. Oh, I'm sorry. And I have one pocket of onion. I've never grown onion in my green stalk before. I know you can grow it, so I figured I'll take one pocket and I'll do some experimenting. So I'm growing two bulbing type onion in one pocket. But I've harvested this about three days ago, maybe four days ago. I gave it a good liquid fertilizer um, two days ago. And I'm just keeping watering it. And then I'm starting to get new leaves put on here. And so I'll be able to harvest from this green stalk at least two or three more times before I'll need to pull these out and put something else in it. In this green stalk here and the top, I call this one my herb green stalk, but that's not all that's in this one. In the top two tiers, I have a couple micro dwarf tomatoes and I have strawberries in the top two tiers. Everything else going down, everything else going down. I have, I have a spider crawling on me is what I have, but everything else, in here is some type of herb. So I have um, flat leaf parsley. I have curly parsley in here. I have marjoram. I have rosemary. I have thyme. I have sage. Um, but all of my 
herbs are down below. I try not to buy any herbs from the grocery store anymore. So I'm trying to harvest a year's supply of all of these type things that I need for my kitchen. And so do I have a whole bunch of pockets of it? I don't. I harvested so much sage last year. I know I have at least two quart jars of nothing but dried sage. And I don't use sage that often, so I don't need that much sage. But I wanted to make sure I had some fresh for fresh cooking and fresh eating, as well as adding to the supply that I've already started. In this last green stalk here, in the very top, I have carrots and only carrots in the very top. And then I have four other layers. Three of the layers are nothing but collard greens. And so I have three tiers of that. So that's 18 pockets and each pocket has anywhere from two to three plants, except for a couple of them. And then in the very bottom, I just planted in here some more pak choy. Let me bring you in close so you can see up close some of the plants in this space. You can see where I harvested this one and I cut it super low because I want to pull it out of the pocket versus it come, uh, being a cut and come again type. This one here is poking up the middle, which means that it's going to seed or is bolting. This one would need to come out as well. But honestly, I've been harvesting off of that one probably since February. So it's been a while. This pocket's already empty. This pocket's empty. So you can see some things are ready to be harvested. Some things are ready to be cut out and it's ready for me to put some new things in other pockets. This one here was all mustard greens and curly kale and dinosaur kale. And I know it doesn't look like much, but I just harvest this clean. There was hardly nothing left but stems. And you can see the leaves are coming back on these. The herb tower, just trying to give you a quick up close look. Parsley is my new favorite herb, so I made sure I had plenty of that because I ran out of parsley this past winter. And then the last one is over here. Let's move to the next green stalk area. These green stalks all have the deep original pockets, so they're 10 inches deep. So for these types of green stalks, I can put larger types of vegetables in them. And I just want to show you how they're doing. This first green stalk here has nothing but green beans in it. And the green beans in here, some of them I transplanted and some of these I started from seeds. So these top two tiers were 100% started from seeds. And you can see they've already caught up almost with the bottom two tiers, which I started from transplants. And they're looking pretty good. Some of these purple beans have some nice blooms that are starting to come on there. They're budding up nicely. And then there's some pockets where I didn't get good germination, where I only have a couple plants in them. But I think this one's coming along nicely and we should definitely have green beans on them sometime in the next month or so. The one just to the side here, again, all larger pockets. And this green stalk has only sweet peppers in it. All different varieties, but all sweet peppers. I have bell peppers. I have horn shaped peppers in here. I have some shishitos, which isn't necessarily a sweet pepper, but it's not a hot pepper either. I have nata pinos in here. So they have the ta taste and texture of a jalapeno, but it doesn't have the heat of a jalapeno. Name it, I have it. I have Joe Parker in here. I have red yummies, yellow yummies, lots and lots of sweet peppers in this one. And in this last set of green stalks here, so this is the third one in this row here, I'm growing just tomatoes. Again, these are 10 inch pockets. And in the 10 inch pockets, you can grow tomatoes. All of my tomatoes are dwarf tomatoes which means they only get three to four feet tall. They're very similar to determinate tomatoes. Determinate tomatoes are usually your shorter, bushier tomatoes. 
Determinate Tomatoes typically though puts all the fruit on at one time. So you have a big harvest coming in at one time and then you have one or two here or there after that. But in here, I have a mixture of determinate tomatoes as well as semi-determinate tomatoes. So these are like your typical, for example, your heirlooms, like a big beef type tomato that typically grows on a vine that's indeterminate that keeps growing and growing and growing. But I'm getting the same type of tomato on a dwarf plant. They already have very, they already have very thick stems. Um, they're healthy and they're already starting to put on some little blooms. So hopefully we'll get to see how these turn out very shortly. And as far as the different types, there are, there are 24 plants in here and I probably have about, I believe about 15 different varieties in here. So we will get to see how they're all doing. So here are all of those beans. I have purple beans and gold rush beans in this planter here. So nothing green, there'll only be gold and purple in this bean planter. Some of these peppers are already trying to put some little buds on them. Nice and deep green. I try to do a liquid fertilizer at a minimum once every 10 to 14 days in all of my green stalks. Because so much water runs through them, you have to be careful and make sure that you don't lose all of your nutrition being washed out the bottom. So a liquid fertilizer every 10 to 14 days is always good with honestly any container gardening. But you want that fertilizer to be low and slow. So you are looking for a fertilizer with an N, P, and K of very low single digit numbers if you're gonna be fertilizing that often. Look at how thick some of these stems are. Look at that. It's just healthy and full, just beautiful. All right, let's move to the next green stalk. I tell you, this green stalk here is probably one of my most favorite green stalks every year, not just this year, but every year. This is my strawberry tower. In my strawberry tower, I have seven tiers and there's six in a tier, in a, and each tier has six pockets. So that's 42 spots. There are two types of strawberry plants. There are June bearing and ever bearing. June bearing strawberries put a massive amount of fruit on all around typically the month of June, maybe July, but it puts a heavy amount on all at once and then they kind of just end for the season, right? They, after they put all of them on so heavy, then you might get one here, one there for the rest of the season, but they put all of their energy into one huge harvest. Everbearing give you smaller harvests, but over a longer time frame. And all of my strawberries are ever bearing. So every day I walk out here, I am at the moment, I am already picking more than a dozen every day. But everywhere where you see one of these nice white pretty flowers will eventually be a fruit. And this thing is covered in flowers but it will give me fruit all summer long. It's gonna give me fruit in June. It's gonna give me fruit in July. It's gonna give me fruit in August, all the way up until the temperatures get a little cold. Now, it might not set blooms when it's super, super hot in the summer at 100 degrees, which we don't have many 100 degree days in Southwest Ohio. Actually, we rarely have a 100 degree day, but we do have some above 90 degree days. And anytime you get above 90 degrees, it's hard for any of your vegetables to set fruit or to set blooms, I should say. So you'll see blooms falling off and that kind of stuff. But as soon as that temperature comes back down, blooms will start developing again, fruit will continue to mature. So this is my absolute favorite tower in the garden. And it's just all strawberries. So let me bring you in close so you can see it. Look how pretty that is. And I absolutely fertilize this one 
every 10 to 14 days as well. Let's move over to the next green stalk. I have more collards growing in the top two tiers here. And as you go down the tiers, there are different items. Now this green stalk is set up very differently because I have leaf planters. So I have the shorter um, pockets because the leaf planters have the shorter pockets and then I have the bigger 10 inch pockets as well. So I have a mixture. I always put my bigger pockets on the bottom and my shorter pockets on the top. But in the top two, like I said, there's collard greens that I started from seeds. And as we move down the green stalk, this next layer here is a mixture of items though. So in here, I have some cabbage and I typically don't grow cabbage in my green stalk, but I'll put a couple in here cause I had so much cabbage to transplant. In the next to the bottom tier, I have all peppers. And in the very, very bottom, I have more of those dwarf tomato plants and I have I don't know it might be six different varieties I'm losing sun so hopefully you can see this so let's start with the top two you can see in there that the collard greens are starting to get true leaves the first leaves are not true leaves but they're starting to come in nicely below there this is where I have vining items. There's some of the melons. There's the, there's the cabbage. Some of the cucumbers, more melons, and one more cabbage on that row there. The next row are the peppers that I was telling you about. And the bottom, of course, are the tomato plants I was telling you about. And they're thick and full and healthy as well. There's always room for more vegetables. So I set this particular area up for my neighbors. And so I try to grow items in here I think that they would appreciate and that they could get joy from as well. You need a green stalk in every garden. And there wasn't one in their space. So I thought we needed to add a green stalk to the entrance of their garden. So in the green stalk, they decided that they wanted some radishes and some, and some carrots in the top. So in the very top, there are radish, every other pocket, and then carrots in the, the pockets in between. And then they have a whole tier of nothing but micro dwarf tomatoes. Micro dwarf tomatoes. We haven't really spent a lot of time as I've been sharing the green stalks, but micro dwarf tomatoes only get between like nine and 12 inches, if that tall so they're very compact plants and all of these are going to put on cherry style tomatoes so not big tomatoes i call them snacking tomatoes and so he has a whole tier with nothing but micro dwarfs and he's got some blooms coming on here not long after there will be tomatoes there's some beautiful red um this is a type of a looser romaine type lettuce, this red one here. And in the very bottom tier, the very, very bottom tier, I had some additional uh, broccoli transplants and some cauliflower transplants. And again, I haven't done a lot of growing of broccoli and cauliflower um, in my green stalk. So in this particular green stalk, we have one original tier on the bottom and you can grow brassicas and the original size tier. And all of the other tiers are leaf tiers. So you want your shorter leafier type vegetables in those. But since he had the one original tier in the bottom, I was able to give them six brassica plants. So he has three cauliflowers and he has three broccoli growing in here. And they are gorgeous. I mean, they're just beautiful. Look how full. I believe this is um, cauliflower because I planted it first. Look at all of the different colors, the different shapes and textures growing in this green stalk. And this green stalk, I believe, has only been set up for three weeks. And he's harvesting lettuce off of this green stalk. It's just absolutely gorgeous. This one here is so beautiful. 
What is this, a little gem? Yep, that's a little gem. There's the marjoram. He did have one plant that went to seed or it bolted on him. And so we pulled it out and we added in another transplant and that was just a couple of days ago and it's already doing amazing. There's his micro dwarf tomatoes. They're not gonna get much taller than what they are. And then up here, these are radishes. And carrots. Now this green stalk, I love this one. This one has a variety of things and we've been harvesting off of this green stalk now for about three weeks or so. In the very top of this green stalk, I just planted some basil seeds that are just starting to germinate right here. If you can see those. And then I transplanted a few basil plants just a few, but everything else I started from seeds. Just below that, the next two tiers are different types of lettuce. There's bib lettuce in here. There's Lantus winter in here. There's romaine in here. Merlot is in here. Lots of different types of lettuce. And it needs to be harvested again right now. And in the last two tiers, in the very bottom, I have curly parsley. I have flat leaf parsley. I have some that I transplanted like this one here and this one here, those were transplanted. And then I started some from seeds as well. So I have some seeds that have germinated there. In the very bottom is cilantro that I started from seeds and they're coming in well. I need to harvest this parsley. It's getting big. And over here at the beginning of my garden, I have two of the basket weave planters of the green stalks. And this one here, it's a green stalk of pansies. There are two different varieties of pansies in there but all pansies, isn't this just gorgeous? I mean, I'm not a flower person, but this is nice. It's really, really nice. And right next to it is a planter full of strawberries and pansies and a couple spots where I have some onion growing, but mostly strawberries and pansies. And y'all look at this. We have strawberries. The strawberries were all transplanted this year. There's another little strawberry right there. They were all transplanted this year. This is the most beautiful green stalk I have. I don't recall ever having a green stalk that looks this good. I mean, this green stalk is amazing. In the very top, I have all red lettuce in the very top. In the second tier down, I have different types of green lettuce. Some of it's heading lettuce, like a butter crunch. There's a purple iceberg lettuce, Pablo's growing there. Come on down, I have some kale growing. So there's curly kale in here that's looking amazing. Look at that curly kale. You go on down to the third tier, there's more lettuce, big old leaf lettuce down there. There's also some romaine lettuce. I'm going to have to talk to my neighbor. They're going to have to start harvesting. But we also got broccoli that we got growing in there and it's already starting to put a head on. So we got broccoli. We have cabbage. We have cauliflower. There's another broccoli that's starting to put a head on and it looks just as good as the broccoli that I have growing in the ground. What an amazing green stalk. But isn't this just gorgeous? If you don't have a green stalk and you're interested in a green stalk, there will be a link in the description below. And if you use my coupon code COZY10, 
you can get $10 off your purchase of $75 or more. But look at all of this food growing in such a small space. If you like this video and you want me to keep these videos going, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and all that kind of good stuff. And I will give you a green stalk update at a minimum once a month so you can see how this green stalk does throughout the season. It doesn't look like this just now. I didn't do anything special to make it look like this. This is just how it grows. That's it for today. So until next time, and I hope there will be a next time that you hang out with me, Kim, at Kim's Cozy Corner. Bye.